In today's video, I wanted to talk about how to get along with all the types on the Enneagram, the best way to get along with them. So the holidays are here. It's supposed to be the most joyful time of the year. Is that how this goes? I'm not even for sure. <laughs> okay, I think this should be over here. But let's be honest, it's not always that joyful getting together with all different types of personalities. Now I do know this year is gonna look a little different for all of us. Um, it might not be huge gatherings and get togethers because of, you know, the state of um, what's going on, but you more than likely are gonna be with your immediate family, the people that you live with. And you might even be doing Zooms with other family members or texts are going back and forth. You're having to buy gifts for people. And in all of that, I still think there are tips that I can share to help you get along better, understand each other better, understand each other's why behind why we're doing what we're doing. So what I'm teaching today should help no matter what the holidays look like for you this year. So I can't wait to dive into the tips um, covering all types today. But first, if you're new here, I'm Hillary, your certified Enneagram life coach. And if you are new to this channel, I teach the Enneagram in the simplest way possible. If this is something you're interested in, then hit that subscribe button down below. All right, so I think I'm gonna wear this hat the whole time. Hopefully it looks okay. And if it doesn't, oh well, who cares? Tis the season, right? But let's go ahead and start with the perfectionist, the type one. The thing I want you to know about the type one is they are extremely hard on themselves. They tend to take on a lot of responsibility and their fear is that they are not good enough. Understanding their why can help us get along with them better. I have five things today to help with this. The first one being take their concerns about things seriously. It's serious to them and so it will really help them if you take them seriously. The second thing is make sure to highlight the good that you see them so that they can see it too. The third thing is if you are wrong about something, ask them for forgiveness, apologize. This goes a really, really long way with a type one. The fourth thing is a lot of times ones are the ones that are the planners. They're planning everything. And so if you can help them uh, with something like this, uh, any of the things that they're planning, that will mean a lot to them. And sometimes just helping looks like listening. Even if you come alongside them and they're like, tell me all your plans, tell me what it's gonna look like. Just listening can be helpful for them. It really lets them know that you're valuing what they're doing. And number five is encourage them to lighten up and have fun. You know, they when they are relaxed and doing well, they're moving towards that healthy side of the seven. And so encourage them to lighten up a little and have fun when they can. Okay, so let's move on to the type two, the helper. What's the why behind why the type two does things? Twos can struggle to believe that they're loved and wanted apart from what they do for you. They always want other people to feel very well cared for and loved, but they sometimes forget that they need that too. The five things to help you understand a two and get along better with them are, number one, they are probably doing a lot around the holidays. Make sure to tell them that you appreciate everything that they are doing and ask if they need help. Now, they're probably gonna say no. They're probably gonna be like, no, 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 I got it all. But just asking can go a long way for a type two. The second thing is they, if you guys are having a conversation, they're always gonna try and focus on you and ask you how you're doing and get to know you better. But don't let the conversation only be about you. Refocus it back to them. Ask them, what are their interests? How are they doing? try and get them to stop focusing only on you and have it be more a uh, two-way conversation. The third thing is let them know how important they are. See something, say something. See something good, say something about it. Don't just think it, say it to them. They need those words. They need words of encouragement. Number four, surprise them with quality time and gifts. This, they, I feel like the two is constantly giving both of those things. So every once in a while, it's great if they get that surprise and surprise them with quality time and gifts. The fifth thing for the type two is remind them to take care of themselves too. It's so important that they are reminded like, hey, you gotta take care of you. Sometimes um, when I'm coaching a two, I have to word it in the way of, if you take care of you, you can take up, you could take care of others even better because they're so focused on taking care of others. They have the sweetest hearts, but they need to know that taking care of them does take care of us too. Okay, so let's move on to the type threes, the achievers. So what is driving those type threes? They think they must accomplish and succeed in order to earn love. 
It's so important for you to tell them that you love and care for them regardless of what they're accomplishing. The accomplishments are great. Don't, don't get me wrong. You know, they, they do, they actually do need you to, you know, tell them they're doing a good job. That's a great thing. Don't withhold that for them, but always just make sure they know even without that, their value is still the same. So how can we relate and get along better with that type three? The first thing I will say is encouragement. Encourage them. Um, when you see them being truly who they are, their authentic self, encourage that behavior. You know, let them know that you see it and you love it and you love them for just who they are. The second thing is holidays can be hectic, especially for that type three. So help them keep their environment harmonious and peaceful. I know that you would think like, oh, I would think that's for a type nine, but actually type threes need that too. The third thing is negative emotions. Neg negativity can really bother a type three. They actually will hear the negativity and sometimes instantly be negative. It'll kind of like disrupt their mood. And so if, if you do need to be constructive in some way with them, um, bring it to them in a more positive way instead of a negative way, if that makes sense. Because negativity really instantly brings them down and upsets them. The fourth thing is tell them that you enjoy being around them. That goes a long way with a type three. And the last thing, number five, if they are working, try and give them the space that they need and the time that they need in order to finish the work that they are working on, disrupting them will cause them to lose focus. So, you know, they, they do enjoy their jobs a lot of times and let them finish um, what they're doing and so that they can relax and enjoy the holidays with you. Okay, so let's move on to the type fours are romantic individualists. These are the ones that bring such a unique depth and beauty to the world. Authenticity and meaningful experiences are so important for type four. So what's the best way to understand them and get along with them better? Well, the first thing I would say, never try and change them. They need you to truly accept them and be empathetic and loving to them. See in them what they might have a hard time seeing in themselves because sometimes they feel like something's missing in them, um, but we know it's not. And so see that in them, see how truly special they are and tell them. So number two is they may have a lot of emotions, especially around the holidays. There's lots of people and things and different things going on and just give a type four the space and time to feel their emotions and to process through them. The third thing is give them authentic compliments, but don't flatter them. They can smell flattery out guys. They don't want fake compliments coming their way. Those authentic ones do mean a lot to them though. The fourth thing is do not tell them that they are overreacting or too sensitive. This kind of goes along with, I think number two and allowing them to have feelings and sort them out. So don't tell them they're being overly dramatic or anything like that. That will really hurt their feelings. And one thing that I actually love about fours is they aren't afraid of their feelings. They will just work through them. They get to the other side. Number five, the last one for the type four, they have gifts of intuition and vision and creativity. Value this in them. Value that they have a good intuition. They have these gifts. Make sure to let them know that you see them and that you value them. Okay, so the type five, the observer. So the holidays can be uh, tough for the type five sometimes. It's a lot of people, it's a lot of intrusion, right? And one of their fears is intrusion and people taking up all their time. And so definitely the, the fives can have a harder time with this. The five, they are that observer. They're very perceptive. They are the ones that make really good, wise decisions based on facts and reason, but they can feel like life demands way too much of them and especially around the holidays. So what are the five things that can help you understand the type five better and get along with them better? Well, the first one, give them time to process their thoughts and feelings. Again, it's similar to the four, but for them, they're not gonna process them in person. So if you're talking to them and they're they're gonna hear what you're saying, the, but the five more than likely will go to a quiet place to process their thoughts and feelings, allow that. And don't come at the type five like a bulldozer with all these expectations of them. You know, like some people, me included, we're excited, the holidays are here, yay. But we can't have that same expectation for other types and especially the type five. Don't be like, oh my gosh, I'm excited so you should be happy too. It doesn't work that way. They are excited, but in their own way. So moving on to the second thing, if they seem distant or not paying attention, it actually might be because they're just uncomfortable. They are pretty private people. And so they're not trying to be rude or like, oh, I'm too good or anything like that. It's just sometimes they just might purely be uncomfortable. The third thing is make them feel important, but don't be overly intense, right? Don't be like, oh my gosh, you're so amazing. I just, I just want to talk to you and get a, you know, whatever. I don't know that might scare them away. So they need calm 
calmness and sincerity. So be calm and sincere when you make them feel important. The fourth thing for the type five is they appreciate directness, but make sure it's a safe place if you're gonna be direct and just give them space. The fifth and final thing to get along with the type five is talk about things that they're interested in too. You might be in over your head because some of the things that the fives wanna talk about, like for me, it's like, oh my gosh, that's like so in depth and so smart and I don't know, knowledgeable. And sometimes I feel like it's, it is going over my head, but that's okay. Even for the five, they're going to want to explain it to you. They will break it down for you and help you understand, but don't only talk about things that you're interested in, get into their world too. Okay. So let's move on to the type six. The loyalist are reliable, faithful, hardworking type six. Now the six struggles with fear and uncertainty. They are hyper aware and they always want to avoid danger or sometimes challenge it head on actually, depending on what uh, subtype you are in as a type six. But I would imagine no matter what type of six you are, counter or counterphobic six, the holidays can be a little bit more stressful for you. So how can we understand them and get along with them better? The first thing I would say, don't require them to be optimistic just because it's the holidays. That's a lot of pressure. Listen to them, hear their thoughts and perspectives. You don't have to agree with them, but listening patiently is really good for the type six and they appreciate that. What's the second thing? Be a safe place to, for them to share their concerns without them feeling judged for maybe if they have anxiety or whatnot, be that safe place for them. You know, those sixes, they can have a doubting mind. So be the safe place that they feel comfortable talking to you about what's going on with them. The third thing is laugh and make jokes with them, you know, have a good time with them. They will love that. The fourth thing is now they might actually procrastinate buying gifts and it's not because they're lazy or like, Oh, I'll get to that later for them. It has more to do with making the wrong decisions. So let them off the hook there. So don't get offended if it's like a last minute thing. And not that it would be, because I don't necessarily think they're big procrastinators, but I'm just saying if they're having a tough time making a decision, that's why, and that's something that you can understand about them. The fifth thing is be gentle and supportive if you wanna ask them to try something new. You know, they do wanna do new things, but they are more cautious. And so just be gentle and supportive when asking them to do and try new things. Okay, so number seven, the enthusiast, the joy bomb on the Enneagram. They radiate positivity and happiness, but internally they are longing for more and they struggle with FOMO fear of missing out. Sad emotions are hard for them. Being bored is a huge fear for them. So what can we do to get along better with them and to meet them on their level? The first thing I would say is give them freedom. Don't tie them down with lots of to-do lists and responsibilities. Even holiday ones might feel overwhelming to them. And so appreciate about them that they do need freedom. It's not like they can't do responsibilities and stuff like that, but don't like bog them down with them. That'll be hard for them. The second thing, appreciate their stories, their big visions of life. Appreciate it. Listen, laugh and enjoy it with them. They really, really would appreciate that. The third thing is don't be too needy or too clingy. That definitely can be hard for the type seven. The fourth thing is if any issues or concerns do come up, because obviously that will definitely happen, try and bring positivity to the issue. Have a plan of action when talking to them about it instead of just being upset or even negative about it. And the fifth and final thing for the type seven is do not expect them to be less than who they are. We don't want them to tone it down. We want to love them just for who they are. Okay, so let's move on to the type eight, the challenger, our big hearted, confident leader. They feel like they always have to be invincible, not show any vulnerability. They fear weakness in themselves. But what's their why? What's the best way to get along with them without needing them to change? The first thing I would say is never gossip about them. This will betray their trust and they do not give this away easily. The second thing is they often speak in a more assertive way. Don't think it's too much, too aggressive, too in your space or personal in any way. More than likely it's not personal at all. That's just how they speak. The third thing is they are doers. They will get the job done no matter what, whether it's something mundane for the holidays or shopping for presents or anything like that, they're gonna get the job done, but they need us to tell them that we see them, we appreciate everything that they're doing. No need to flatter them, but just tell them that you're thankful for them. The fourth thing is be vulnerable with them first. Sometimes you going first allows them to feel more comfortable and it'll help them to know that they can be vulnerable too, but make sure you keep it just between you two, keep that a safe place. And the fifth and final one for the type eight is just because they look angry or come across angry does not mean they are angry. Goodness, guys. Okay, you guys know I'm a type nine, married to a type eight. 
And a lot of times I do think he looks angry. And, uh, and over the years, we've been married 21 years, so I've learned. But uh, early on in our marriage, I just always was like, why are you so angry? And he literally would look at me shocked and go, I'm not angry at all. And so it kind of goes piggybacks off of the, they are assertive and they are aggressive. Um, that's okay. That's just who they are. And so don't assume that they are angry if they look angry. More than likely, they're actually not. I can't tell you. I would say, say there's 10 times that I've asked my husband, like, are you angry? Maybe one of the 10, was he actually angry? Okay, so the last one, the type nine, the peacemaker, myself. They are our peaceful mediators. I And I'm gonna speak from personal experience. The holidays can be rough on me. And for a whole host of reasons. And when I think about it, I think one of the big ones for me, the type nine is family. You know, you, you got family from all different places, even if you're not seeing them in person, um, it still could feel chaotic. And like, you're trying to keep the peace with everybody. You know, you might get a, you know, I have my phone right here and you get a text from so-and-so and they're like, Hey, you know, this, 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 and this. And you're like, Oh yeah, sounds great. And then you get another text and they say something and it's opposite of what the other person said. And then you're like, trying to make them happy and trying to make them happy. And then you're like, I don't know what to do. And so, and then all of a sudden we can become passive and go, I can't do anything at all. So I'm not gonna answer anything. And those type nines, they are gonna try and make everybody happy, but they are self forgetting when they do that. So how can we relate to them and get along with the type nine? The first thing I'm gonna say is, say it, you are in a bigger family, there are a lot more people, whether, like I said, no matter, you know, in person, not in person, whatever that is, they're gonna be bigger personalities. And a lot of time the nine is gonna let the bigger personalities talk first, show up first, anything, right? They're gonna kind of just wait their turn. And unfortunately, sometimes the nine doesn't even get a turn because they were so quiet and then you know you move on to the next thing. So what I'm saying for you, how to get along with them better, give them space to talk, listen well, and don't talk over them. That's really important for the type nines. The second thing is the type nines, they do like to listen and be of service. Make sure that that doesn't get taken advantage of. The third thing is show them, tell them that their voice matters, that their presence matters, their opinions matter. Um, they do need to hear that. The fourth thing is encourage the nine to be bold and confident and show up and really bless everyone with their presence. That's super important for the nine. And the fifth and final thing, the nine, they hate conflict. You guys know it's a core fear of the nine. They don't mind a good discussion, but they will dance around anything that feels like conflict. And one thing that surprises the nine is they are exhausted afterwards. And the reason is, is because they used all their energy dancing around conflict. And so that's one thing to know about the nine that they do not like or want conflict at all. Okay, guys, so that's all. Thank you so much for listening to how to get along with all types of people. Hopefully this will give you more grace and understanding for your family, your friends, everybody in your life this holiday season. You know, let me know in the comments below. Did these, did these resonate with you? What's your type? What stood out for you? What are you like amening? And as I'm talking like, yes, listen to that guys, let us know. Uh, I love it when we all interact with each other and get to know each other better. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. That means a lot to me, guys. And if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and push that subscribe button right now if you like learning the Enneagram in the easiest way possible. And the last thing is, um, if you don't, if you watch this video and you're like, gosh, I don't even actually know my type while well, you're in luck, I offer a Discover You typing session. It's a personal one-on-one -on -one over Zoom session with me. I will link that down below so that you will have more information on what that is, the price and all the details on that. And if you want, go give me a follow on social media, Hillary underscore McCaskey underscore coaching, and make sure to DM me and say hi. And then I get to know you guys on a more personal level. But that's all I have for today, guys. Until next time. Bye, guys.